Yeah, when I came in to get my packet, I went and visited Tessa, who we were on the council together, oh, Joy okay. and I, Marion, at the same time. Yeah, so that was nice. We're going to try to have lunch and get, get yeah, us. She talks about you know, again with Joy and her. Yeah, and Mar Mar Do you know Marion? Did you have you met Marion Tlersky or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the four of us were. Yeah, yeah. We're the feminazis. Is this me? I'm not sure. All of them, I think so. Where's the mayor? Where, where's the mayor? She's got signs on the highway. And Jesse, Mary, and I were like, that this is Ollie. A teacher and a teammate. Sorry, Ollie. Hey, darling. Hi, Ollie. Go again. Oh, God, she lived in the picture. Wow. Yes. 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 But because we didn't have that, there you are. I was just texting you. Not that you, not that you were late or anything. Uh, okay. That's like if there's something else, it doesn't affect anything else. I want to just have a lawyer. What do you call it? You put it at the end of an ordinance that says, well, just in case it's mistaken to someone. The rest of the word that still stands. Escape. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Tig, you come to all the meetings and you wear these t shirts and all this stuff written all over. It's like, no, we're the good guys. You don't have your Am I gonna am I gonna surrogate for for Ollie? <laughs> yeah, he's on. Um, will you guys be able to hear him and stuff? Okay, I was gonna say it's all you, Dave. Yeah. 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 If he talks, Dave, you get to be his surrogate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 good. For the ordinary of case, not so much as a bigger cheese, you want to jar us? Yeah. Are you saying five hours? Yeah. If I have more, I didn't want to go away, so I did have any sales by just one something, and then I have to do it. No, no. I need to get a question from us. Let's call the count. I think mission says session April 25th, 2023, or 602 p.m. Uh, roll call. Please. Sure. Here. 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 Here.
Thanks. Uh, let's uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Dave, uh, Mr. Lum, for uh, the presentation of the meeting for speakers training with the city attorney. I'll let the staff take it first. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've been serving as a city attorney for about four months now, and I haven't had a chance to meet all of you in person. Uh, Jordan and I have, have spent some time talking about the need for some training uh, for commissions and the council uh, in public meetings, public records, ethics, conflicts of interest. Um, but th those turn out to be um, kind of difficult topics, not that the subject matter is so extensive, but the questions end up taking a great deal of time. So we're trying to figure out a kind of an efficient way to do that. And it may be through some videos with the basic uh, rules set out and then an opportunity in live meetings to for you to pose questions and me to try to answer. Uh, but tonight I just wanna focus on two uh, fairly simple goals. First of all, just kind of the basic steps in, in getting to a planning decision. Uh, those are just reminders that I think you all know, but uh, it, it pays to be reminded of them periodically. And the second a goal is to, to try to uh, encourage you to use some productivity tools, um, basically tools from um, Robert's Rules of Order. Um, so let me get started. Um, uh, section seven of the Council Rules of Procedure. It's a little bit long, but I'm gonna read the whole darn thing to you, um, and then and then try to unpack it. Uh, it says the presiding officer shall move through the order of business on the agenda. Once the agenda has uh, been announced, the presiding officer shall ask for any recusals on the agenda item. The presiding officer shall then ask for a staff report if applicable. Once the staff report is completed, the presiding officer shall entertain questions and comments from the council. Once the question period is complete and the presiding officer then may invite any speakers who have filled out a speaker request form to address the council. The council may then move on to the next agenda item without taking any action, may provide uh, further direction to staff or a member may make a motion to take the specific act, a specific action on the agenda item, which if seconded begins deliberation. Quasi-judicial hearings, as you know, are governed uh, by some special rules uh, that kind of fit uh, within that umbrella that I just read to you. Uh, the uh, Town Municipal Code 190.150C5 says participants in the appeal of a type two administrative decision or type three hearing are entitled to an impartial review authority as free from potential conflicts of interest and pre-hearing ex party contacts as reasonably possible. As a result of that city provision and the section seven of the council rules and for similar provisions in state plan, uh, uh, state land use planning statutes, the stages of quasi judicial hearings are pretty clearly prescribed and they're set forth in the um, in the, uh, the chair's opening script uh, uh, that you all have, have heard before. Um, but even when we're not in a quasi-judicial hearing, uh, the basic stages uh, of, of a meeting by the planning commission are really pretty much the same. Step one, chair initiates uh, the agenda item stating its title. Step two, Members are asked if they have any actual or potential conflicts of interest um, and for recusals if they have any actual conflicts of interest. Now, of course, in, in a, a quasi-judicial setting, uh, you have to go further and ask about any ex parte contacts. And the applicant then has an opportunity to challenge uh, what statements have been made by the members of the Planning Commission about their actual or potential conflicts and about their ex parte contacts. Step three, even beyond, even outside of a quasi-judicial hear judicial hearing, the chair asks staff for its summary uh, of, of the staff report. Step four, the Planning Commissioners may ask clarifying questions of the staff. 
That's clarifying only. This is what gets confusing sometimes. It's not a place for argument. It's not a place for leading questions or expressing one's preconceived notions uh, or conclusions. That's deliberation. Um, um, the, uh, and particularly in ex parte hearings, you at this stage, you do not want to be talking about your preconceived notions, even if you have them, because that opens you up to appeal. Uh, that's a time for you to ask questions, not state views. Uh, step five, the chair opens the public hearing or outside of you know, just in a regular hearing, not a quasi-judicial hearing, uh, invites public testimony. Um, and then the planning commissioners have uh, the opportunity to ask clarifying questions of the presenters. Again, clarifying only. Uh, no argument, no leading questions. Uh, and if you if you fail to recognize that barrier, you're opening yourself up to uh, to appeal. Uh, then the chair closes the public hearing or the public testimony if it's not quasi judicial. And then the planning commissioners can ask staff clarifying questions. Um, again, clarifying only because you don't want to at this stage be revealing whatever biases you might have. Uh, your opportunity to do that is in step eight, when you have the opportunity to uh, begin deliberation. Now, the council rules say uh, the deliberation uh, shouldn't start until after the motion is made. That's hard. Um, and I'm not sure we don't want to change that in the future, because it's often you want to kind of hear what people are thinking or hear what they're concerns or questions are before you're ready to pose a motion that you think might have a good chance of, of prevailing. Um, so it's a little bit of a gray area uh, in, in the uh, council rules. It does say you uh, uh, may provide further direction to staff. I would call that a little opening to allow the uh, council members or the planning commission members to uh, to weigh in and say, well, I'm, I'm wondering about this, I'm thinking about this, and, and then help you figure out how to craft the motion that you're eventually uh, going to make. And then, but at that point, after a motion is made uh, and seconded, then that's when you uh, are open for real discussion and you can start saying, well, here's how I view it and, uh, and have an opportunity for real deep conversation uh, before you vote. You're gonna ask a question. Well, that, a couple of times you referenced referencing the council rules of procedure and so those govern us as well even though we're they, they do we only have our own bylaws right yeah but you op operate under the council rules i also wanted to make a comment that um the um the deliberation um i believe and correct me if i'm wrong uh, is is kind of coming out of the uh robert's rule so robert's rule says uh that deliberation starts after the motion and um, when I, I know when we revised the council rules, that was quite a discussion around that. And we ended up, um, yeah, defaulting to what Robert's rules prescribes. Um, and it, you're right, it is challenging. It's very challenging. Right. Um, but I think it also maintains objectivity of the body until there's a motion that can either live or die based on the discussion or the deliberation. It, it does help you keep that, that separation from stating your views too early. That's right. Um, but it is so hard to really do that. And I, uh, you are, as I'll tell you in just a minute, um, you're not bound by, I mean, you, you have a statement that you are bound by uh, Robert's rules, but you can change that. That's not a state requirement. Right. The state just requires that you have some meeting procedural rules. Um, and so you could alter that yeah we could uh, relax the rules too i mean if you didn't exactly want to follow them, yes I and, and i think that's an area where you probably are going to want to relax them just to that little bit allow people to have some discussion before a motion is made um so moving on to the kind of second uh goal or second thing i wanted to talk about tonight um and that's these tools for productivity particularly robert's rules productivity uh, rules and section one uh, B of um, of the council rules 
says, unless otherwise provided by charter or ordinance or these rules, the procedure for council meetings and any subcommittee of the city council, which would include you, uh, shall be guided by Robert's Rules of Order. Um, the Secretary of State's manual on public meetings says rules of parliamentary procedure provide the means for orderly and expeditious disposition of matters before a board, commission, or council. They govern the way members of a multi-member uh, body interact with each other. And then if you look at the material that was provided to you, uh, it's page five of your packet, uh, also labeled page one of seven. You look at three and four there under basic principles, it's uh, of parliamentary procedure. Uh, number three says every member has rights that are equal to every other member. And number four says the will of the majority must be carried out and the rights of the minority must be preserved. Those are really key points. Um, I, I guess I would try to express them even more pointedly and say that the key function of Robert's Rules of Order uh, is to provide for structured deliberation and decision-making, but with flexibility based on democratic principles, uh, including protection of minority rights. And these, uh, uh, these principles keep the rules from becoming a rigid source of control. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, um, one member, under Robert's Rules of Order, one member has a great deal of procedural power. But once that member uh, exercises that power, the group then decides by majority vote. Also important, the other sort of other side of the coin for Robert's Rules is it helps you clear out the underbrush, clear out the distractions that tend to get involved in any complicated uh, decision-making. And that is why I included these five handy uh, parliamentary procedures that is on page three of your packet. And I wanna just talk about them for just a minute um, and, and solicit any questions you have about them. But I wanna highlight that these are those instances of uh, individual member power. Uh, Number one, point of order. You can interrupt whoever has the floor to make a point of order, and the chair has to respond to you. Um, the chair can uh, ask for a little clarification, but not. there's no debate, there's no second required. Uh, the chair has to make a ruling. Um, and then uh, number two, there's an opportunity for an individual to interrupt and seek a ruling on that point of order that the chair has made. Uh, that does require a second um, and can be debated. But again, an individual can interrupt the proceedings to say, okay, we just heard this, this uh, ruling by the chair. I want to see how the whole group feels about it. Um, the, uh, the third uh, one on the list is another example of an individual being able to interrupt a speaker uh, without permission from the chair uh, and say, I have a point of information uh, or a part of, I have a parliamentary inquir inquiry uh, that has to be addressed to the chair. Doesn't require a second. There's no debate. Um, uh, the, only, the only bar to that is the speaker has a chance to say, I wanna finish my comment. Uh, before you uh, raise that request for information. Um, uh, but that's not a decision by the chair. That's a decision by the speaker, whoever that may be. Um, and then the the final, I want to skip number four. It gets a little complicated and it's not quite on, on the point that I'm trying to make. And that is calling for the orders of the day. Uh, once you have a published agenda, uh, that those are that's called the orders for the day, um, and if the group starts to stray from that published agenda, any member can interrupt. Uh, no second is required. No debate is allowed. 
you can interrupt and say, I call for the orders of the day. And that obtains. That doesn't even require a rule by the chair. It just obtains unless somebody moves uh, to suspend the rules. Uh, and so another individual member has the opportunity to say, I'd, I'd like to suspend the rules so we don't have to abide by that published agenda. Um, that has to be seconded and then voted on. So the, the sum of that is that you individual members have a lot of authority to make sure that you get through the underbrush, that you get to the things that uh, you said uh, in the agenda need to be dealt with. Um, and um, and it, it's, but ultimately, uh, each of those turns out to be a decision by, uh, by the majority. So that's what I wanted to emphasize. Um, it's, uh, I've been dealing with parliamentary procedure for a lot of years now, and uh, it's, tends to be viewed as sort of, a, I don't know, procedural gobbledygook um, that gets in the way of decision making. And I would argue quite the opposite. It actually facilitates decision, decision making uh, if you use it um, and use it uh, with, uh, I guess, what I'd call good faith. Um, I mean, it, it, sometimes it's hard to say, I have a point of order. It feels like you're challenging somebody. Um, but it's a way of, again, clearing out the underbrush. Let's get down to what we're really talking about and what the group really wants to talk about. If we're off onto something that is not what the group wants to talk about, you can find out very quickly uh, with a point of order. Um, and there are lots of other procedures in Robert's Rules, aside from these five, that also help with that kind of quickly getting to what the majority really wants to talk about. Uh, but these are ones that I have found over the years are really key and can be really useful if you'll if you'll make use. So that's my my sermon. <laughs> uh, but I'd, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Uh, go ahead, uh, we don't have a parliamentarian, so what would be? Hmm. We don't have a parliamentary, so what do we do? I would suggest that you appoint a parliamentarian for your meetings, uh, and it it could be Kim or Kim's replacement. Uh, um, it's most of the time it doesn't it, it really doesn't come up because. Uh, the parliamentarian doesn't doesn't set the rules. The parliamentarian the parliamentarian gives his or her opinion based on the rules, but that doesn't mean that the chair has to abide by that. For instance, on a point of order, the chair can decide. I don't I don't care what you think the rules are. Uh, I'm going to decide, and then the group has a chance to challenge that. So I I think the parliamentarian can. Uh, and I sometimes I will be there, but uh, but the parliamentarian can uh, help sometimes, but I don't think it's an essential role. The group kind of acts as the parliamentarian. Yeah, because yeah, because they can say I you know I want to I want to challenge the, the ruling by the chair. Okay, uh, so um, I I can't confused about um, you said. When the when somebody said point of order, the speaker has to stop. But then you said the speaker gets to decide that if they finish. That's just on the on the request for information. Let let's say um, uh, uh, let's say you're you're talking about something or other, and and you can't quite figure out where she's going with that. You can say I rise to a point of uh, inquiry, or a point of information. Uh, I'd like to know where you got that information. Um, and you actually don't address that to her. You address that to the chair. Uh, and, and then she can say, um, I, I'd like to finish my, my point. I'm not, you, you can't stop me 
I have the floor and I get to continue my point. So, and, and she may well cover your question in the course of that. Um, but that's the only time that the speaker uh, has the ability to uh, kind of direct the flow. It's a point of information. Point of information or parliamentary inquiry. The point of what was being said at that moment? Well, what we were just discussing was the request for information. Point of order could be anything contrary to your order, uh, uh, to your, uh, uh, to the meeting procedures. Uh, you could say, I mean, that could be, uh, we, uh, uh, that's not a, uh, a parliamentary rule that is open for debate, uh, or, or that does require a second, or any, any, uh, Point that you think where we're we're as a group off track, you can you can say you know sorry I want to interrupt I have a point of order um, we're supposed to be discussing X and we're off onto Y. Um, and, pardon, correct. Yeah. So that's different than the point of information. That's different than the point of information. You really are just seeking information then. Okay. And on the point of order, it's the chair that makes that initial ruling. Uh, but but that ruling can be challenged. With respect to a, a point of information, um, it's the speaker who says, you know, I won't finish, or yeah, go ahead and ask your question, and then I'll finish. Speaker, the speaker has some just real discretion. So, so anyone can make a point of order, or only the chair can with the chair... Any no anybody can make a point of order, including the chair. By the way, that's an important point that that sometimes people miss. Uh, that sometimes the chair is sitting there thinking, "Wait a minute, we're way off into the weeds." Um, I'm going to make a point of order, uh, and then he gets to rule on it. He or she gets to rule on it, but the group gets to challenge that rule. It's honest to anybody attend. No, no, this applies to members. Yeah, this is just the members. As well as ex officios. Right. Yeah. Which I've made, I think the last point of order I made was um, when deliberation starts to happen before um, there's any, you're really even heading into a motion. And, um, and it, you know, again, from my perspective, it's about an objectivity viewpoint. So I haven't, I, I've, I've been willing to make a couple of point of orders. I, I should say that's actually something that I think we need to cover in our rules at some point. It's not um, in other jurisdictions that I've worked in, ex officio members couldn't make a point of order. I uh, know that's a practice here, um, and we probably need to clarify that in, in the rules. So we're... Uh, we're I, I think clear. the rules do clarify it, um, and it would be interesting to look at what that what that means. Oh, well, if they yeah. did, I missed that. Yeah. But, but anyway, oh, oh. it's worth clarifying. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy yeah. to send you what, I, what I've seen. Okay. One question. Oh. This is a, that question. When you say that you can ask clarifying questions before a motion is made, after the second you could deliberate, sometimes clarifying questions might sound like it's deliberation. So, I mean, I guess... How do you really know that it's it's not going over it's like gray right line? Well, you 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 don't know. You've got to exercise your judgment but recognize that that if you are in effect revealing a conclusion, and we're talking about ex parte hearing right now, if you're revealing a conclusion that you have reached before you've heard the evidence, when you're supposed to be making a decision based on the evidence only. That would be bias that can be challenged in the Court of Appeals. I mean, in the uh, in Luba. Does that does that also apply to legislative matters as well? I mean, I think that's an important clarification because sometimes, um, you know, in a legislative matter, people might be here to speak on the matter and and try to, you know, pr try to influence the the board to make a decision. And um, I, isn't it? Isn't it equally as um, applicable in a legislative manner? I would argue that it is, although it's not a legal requirement. I would say it's a requirement of kind of the group's credibility. 
Yeah. Uh, you you want to make sure that you're conveying to the to the person testifying that you're actually listening to them. You haven't made up your mind already that they may have a re reasonable point for you to consider. And you in the back of your mind, you might be by <laughs> you might be saying that's that's uh, not a very good point, but you should wait and hear that person out uh, and then weigh what they've said against against what else you've heard. Thank you, Dave. So on the call for order of the day, it appears that that can happen at any point during the meeting? Yes. Okay, because it seems like that would be, that does appear to contradict, well, yeah, it's just another thing, like you're following the agenda. What is, what is the purpose? I guess I'm going to totally don't understand. If you're following the agenda, then at any point, uh, by two thirds vote, uh, somebody can say we did not follow this agenda. And, it, and, and stick with this up. Is right. that a good idea? Yeah, I mean, I, the idea is somebody. I, I think the, the reason for it, let me start with that, uh, is the, the audience or the, you know, the general public has, has gotten information about the agenda and the order of the agenda. And they might say, well, number eight on the 8.2 on the agenda, that's what I care about. I'm going to come at, uh, at 745 instead of 645 because I don't, so I don't want to sit through the rest of them. And then if, if suddenly that's been moved up to number two on the agenda, they miss their opportunity. So it's part of kind of public involvement uh, so that everybody has uh, expectations that are really set in, in, a, you know, in the public information. But what you're describing happened at the beginning. It could happen at the beginning. It, it'd be nice it probably would happen at the beginning, but it could happen at any time. Somebody, there, there could be an issue that comes up uh, that the group feels is important enough to deal with right now that you um, uh, frustrate those expectations that the public has, has, and you just say, this is so important, we're going to suspend our rules and deal with this one right now. But that, again, is a decision that the, the group would be making. Yeah, that, that's interesting just because it's not, so that doesn't appear to be in the bylaws. So that's, or it almost appears to contradict the authority of the chair. It, where the, the bylaws are pressed, like, well, the, the chair has the authority to be an official. Right. And so, but two thirds vote at any time what can control the agenda on whatever. Yeah. And that's, so that's true of council, too. Uh, yes, it's true of council, too. And then, again, that's just. You know, to to provide some flexibility within these rules, uh, they actually are, you know, reasonably flexible. But but they they also set out some pretty clear expectations, so people kind of know, you know, how to proceed. And that's why that's why they work because it sets these expectations that everybody has, but it allows this tweaking uh, on occasion when you when you really you really need it. I don't see anything in the first pages about when you call the question, like if it's big, it's shut up and mm -hmm. But uh, then is that there's no, that, that doesn't require a second. It's like these other actions that don't require a second. No, that uh, and that is covered in the in the longer piece under the, the basics of parliamentary procedure. Um, I I'd have to look. I'm not sure which page it's on right now, but um, if you let me see. Uh, call for previous question. This is on uh, page eight or or of seven. Uh, it looks like about the eighth or ninth. Uh, uh, row down to call for the previous question, you can't interrupt the speaker. You've got to have the chair recognize you. Uh, it does require a second. Um, but it's not debatable. 
and uh, requires a two thirds vote. Uh, well, yeah, we, yeah, we haven't mentioned both, both as well. Yeah, fre frequently what happens is it's pretty clear. Everybody, everybody's in agreement. It's time for us to vote. We've talked this to death, so let's let's get on with it. And somebody finally says, "I call the question." An organic vote. Yeah. I just want to say I've learned um, as presiding officer that one one way that you can avoid that of happening, I mean, if you want to avoid it, is just reminding during deliberation that um, that it's uh, any second comments made by any member should be new information and not repeating or being argumentative with another member. And I, I it just <laughs> never happens at that point. That's my experience. One more question. So I noticed that the, the council rules are a resolution, and and uh, I was wondering, since it's a resolution and not an ordinance, how binding that makes them. And I also would ask you if our bylaws are binding, or would they have to be adopted by the council to be like? I um, on the first question, um, the. Uh... <laughs> I lost your first question now. <laughs> oh, well, a resolution is still is still binding. Uh, it's just that it doesn't. Uh, it's harder. To, it's easier to change than an ordinance, uh, and it's not tracked as readily. We really need to actually get to the point where we are. Uh, we have our all our resolutions in one document that we can easily track. That's a goal of mine, um, but. Um, uh, right now, you got to do a sort of, uh, you know, a detailed search uh, uh, to find the resolutions. <laughs> um, but uh, a resolution is is binding. Uh, what about to, your bylaws? Um, I think under your procedures, you are allowed to establish your bylaws as long as they're not um, in conflict um, with the uh, council rules or in conflict with any state laws. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, this is good. Maybe we can follow up at some point too. And see if we have a sense of everything from the administration to do this. What? What? Thanks. No, I uh, and I'll be happy to. If any of you have any questions, you know, you can email me too and, and uh, or, and we will be having more training sessions that will get deeper into some of these subjects. But these are the ones that I thought were really worthy of highlight. For now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before uh, we you turn, today, you know, uh, uh, Mission Riley, do you want to do uh, that? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Gabe. Good night. Our loss is Medford's gain for sure. Okay, I'm going to start the meeting and then we'll start uh, a little bit later in the meeting. The study session adjourned at 6 37 p.m. And uh, let's call to order the regular South Crown Commission meeting of April 25th, 2023, at 6 37 p.m. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Here.
if he does he yep are you present and you can hear commissioner buffalo buffalo you know i it, it's getting really uh it's getting really uh jarbled in there i uh I was able to pick up because I was right next to uh, the attorney. Um, I was able to pick up most of what we were talking about and follow along in the packet, but I don't know if I'd be, I, I honestly can't hear anybody else talking. The mic's just not picking it up. Can you hear if we're picking up on the microphone? Sorry? Yeah, if you, if you wanna, I don't want to do that, Jane. Oh, God, I got it. Um, you you can go there, um, uh, Ollie, if you want. Are you staying or are you going? You just froze up. Okay. Sorry, I you just froze pretty hard. I can't hear you. We're just, just gonna leave you here. <laughs> um, oh no. Can you hear okay? Okay. Yeah. Guys, I, I gotta tell you, it's it's really like I there's there's the sound part and then it's also just the connection so choppy. I feel like it's gonna be pretty cumbersome. I don't wanna I don't wanna be a problem for for the this is serious. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Oh, again, darn it. No. So long, everybody. Um, when are all the logistics of how they're going to meet, what they're going to do? Um, they're still working a few things out and they have their first architect for review for 223 talent um, and they put that with conditions. So if you're interested in knowing what the conditions are, um, we can, um, I'm happy to email those to any of you or all of you if you're interested in knowing what those are. Um, it, it was a great meeting. They um, were really good about discussing the issues with the applicant, the applicant. Um, went forward and did the past. So it, I think it's going to be a really good move for a challenge. To have a team. Um, and it makes it, it takes it kind of all, all of us um, because they have so much passion for it. So it's, it's a really, I think it's it's a, it's a good group. Um, and I'm really uh, happy to them. Yeah, you've heard the community as well. So I think we will all think. That's your question. Yes. What is a uh, two two three? Which one is that? Um, I mean, is it residential? Yes, residential. Yeah. And I'm already making this. So uh, that's all. Cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, and uh, so we're on to approval minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? I don't want to suggest, uh, I, um, 
I wanted to I want to check this is a like um this is a busy day on when February 28th is part I just wanted to check a cause or two on in the minutes. Is it okay if we um hold those for the next meeting? Would you guys be okay with that? I guess I'll say Chris and <laughs> I just wanted to check it out. Thank you. I just need to get the log. I'm going to check it through the log. I'll follow up on that with staff. Sometimes I do that. I just I see something where it says where it may have said something. I want to make sure that the record is what it said. That they said that 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 that's all it is. And uh, even though the audit is going to confirm it, but the uh, as far as the March 20th planning commission is there, um, that's, I don't have questions on that. Does everybody um, have a chance to review this? Any uh, suggested uh, changes or otherwise I'll entertain a motion? Uh, Commissioner, I have a approval of the minutes for, from um, March 28, 2022. I said good. <laughs> uh, motion and a second for approval of the minutes in March 28, 2023. Um, roll call. Please do that. So I talked to uh, about that. Um, really you, you don't have to. Okay, so the minutes will just be able to. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Uh, and any abstentions? No. Okay, any minutes? Great. Thank you for talking about that. Do you want to withhold the architectural review committee? Do you, I think you should vote on holding those and continue this. Um, okay, what do you want? To, you don't want to review this, please. Yeah, I'd like to review this the next or just take that at the next meeting with that. So, okay. so, and you want to vote for that? Yes, okay, okay. sure. I'll entertain a motion uh, regarding the next meeting. So, I think that we uh, that we move. <laughs> Uh, yeah, continue. Thank you. Thank you. I would we continue the architectural review committee meeting minutes from February 28, 2023 to the next May, May meeting. So, got a motion in the second. Yes. Commissioner Davis on the second. And um, any discussion? Would you like to speak to that motion? Okay, uh, we'll do a kind of way to vote on the next one. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Any other impact? Okay, great. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you for moving that. I appreciate it. Uh, public comments and non agenda items. There are no public here. So, I'm going to assume there's no public comments. Uh, on the number five, uh, finding the facts um, uh, for the, denier, the denial of variance, section 23-001, March 28, 2023. Um, do you want to do it? So, as you all recall, we have a variance of the previous meeting, um, which um, staff recommended approval for so we put before you today because we just had a verbal on the denial that i do but we have tonight is our findings for denial and so we wanted to make sure that everybody reviewed those findings and were uh, and we initially approved those findings for denial because we didn't because they weren't in writing it wasn't necessarily official that we deny that the findings for denial so this is your time to approve the findings for the variance one by two. And 
it's this is going to be a little confusing because some of the language that I sent in I had deleted some of the comments, but in the red line is transfer through. So um, you can kind of see it, I think. Uh, what is the note that you can get? In the packet, there was already on. I thought on the one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's not it. Okay. Then, presented a Commissioner Riley. Yeah, that I I messed up because I think she had basically dumped all of my notes on me. And so, like, that's why, and then I went back. I did when I did this, I dropped some of the things that could be in there. And I saw I saw one of them carried over. So that's why I assumed it was, but I agree with that again. I think you're right. I think you pulled it. And we I believe we used your edited comments. Oh we, we edited that. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. All right. I I think when I what happened is I saw the when I was looking at this today, I saw a PUD language and thought, oh, it's still in there or where I didn't really make a problem. Yeah, I think it appears to have already been there. It doesn't appear. I don't think that correction. Okay. Thank you. 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 But it is, thanks for bringing this. It is good for all the commissions to look at it and see um, if there's language that they feel like should have been there. Um, or if something wasn't, yeah, the decided that you guys agree with this. I, well, that's, I don't, I, I don't know why we would leave that in there. It appears. I mean, in order to go to the community, it was like a rebound. So, well, so should we just take out the tools? Yeah, we can. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, let me explain why I put that that way is because uh, I think the staff, maybe the staff report, and then the report from the applicant that said, because once that, once that, if, Appears to have been a mobile park originally, and one that it was originally a mobile park, and so that's why I just well, there was some uncertainty. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I think it's all about and then now it's the new or was it originally a mobile home park under the PD ordinance? It's but it has a lot, but it's confusing. But I have one, yeah, I, I yeah, can that's, it, it's not, you know, it's not so. Well, can we just leave it, Commissioner? No, I, I don't think we should because you know, but yeah, because you mean the mobile home, no. lots no. Of the they were gonna be a mobile home park. And then oh, they okay. changed the model to the big snap page. Oh, so and then they made this a new Okay, all right. That's fine. If, if we can just strike the peers. Uh... You can tell us what they did on this and we have an H. Yeah, I'm sorry, H. Page 32. Or some, look, I'm going to get this. It's in the PR page one. It says property intended to secure the community. So maybe that's the. So I guess um, the way I'll do this is if somebody's got a suggestion, if somebody objects to the change, please repeat that. Um, just because um, I think that's a bad thing to do over here. Uh, and we can look at the other appears too, if anybody is right there. So the community was approved in the PUD, is what you'd like to say there? Is that so the community was approved as a PUD? And 
I'll make sure I'm there tomorrow morning. The seven. Okay, you can put that in there, but it's not a plan B. Oh, and so if you don't like the fact that it, well, it was, was it just that it appeared? Was, it was, it was it original. I'm sorry, it, it's too much. I should say it was original. Oh. You're right. This is not the only the only reason, I mean, it's obviously like the applicant is say the same here. This is the PD or this is the PD, and that is one of the rationales for preventing bullying, and that's why it came up. Um, that's why I'm suggesting the PD. Yeah. Uh, I just side out a little bit. But when you've been looking at this, the history of this, do you? Have you found why it was used there on high density? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm not using this. I Let's just get through this. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I want to get through it with the goal and get through it to the summer. So, and so I, I uh, yeah. That's the only thing for any. Uh, yeah, I just want to get through this. Yeah, yeah. I want everybody to just look it over. And if anybody has any questions or if there's anything that anyone wants to know. Uh, I think I'm fine. Anything else? Can I ask him a quick question? Is this supposed to be on Zoom? Is this supposed to be a hybrid meeting of some kind? So when he left, I just want to make it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm like, nobody's here. <laughs> 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 